Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Colchester Kriegspiel with me, Dave Pumphouse. If you missed the previous videos, I advise you to maybe go take a look at them, and if you like them, give them a little thumbs up. It helps other people find this uh, nice little homebrew game that we're hosting for people. And I've got to say, it's interesting to see the orders that have come in from all of our generals over the last week and a half and seeing how they're enjoying themselves and getting into character it's uh, it's pure drama as I have said uh, only minutes uh, before in, in the discord but we've got some got some stuff going on and uh, now it's now it's 10 o'clock it, it's time to tell you all what's happening so we've got Colonel Barkstead here with his large force a very well trained infantry that include Barkstead's uh, regiment and Ingleby's regiment they've uh, managed to push off that small encampment of Royalist horse now the Royalist horse they, they gave ground without a fight Charles Lucas who commands them said there's no point in you fighting on your own against against Pike and Shot Come, come back, come back to St. John's Abbey and we'll see what they do afterwards so what Barkstead intends to do is, is form up his pike and shot along this small little ridge here and then see what he wants to do after that now Lord Fairfax has taken up a position on his left with a small gun battery of six nice little four pounder Civil War guns and has uh, split his cavalry he's got one troop so only 50 men accompanying this this battery and 150 men guarding the right flank of Barkstead I'm not really sure if Fairfax, although I've seen him play, he was uh, he was in our little Lynchburg game. I know he's an experienced commander in Kriegspiel and he sees the ground well, but I think he might be missing the obvious that right now this force of cavalry is opposed by double the amount of force. They've got 300 horse sitting up here at St. John's Abbey just against his 150. And if this force of 150 cavalry decides to attack, which I have been told that they are to do that at 10.15, it might look quite troublesome for the guns. We'll give them a couple of shots as they see the cavalry approaching, and we might even roll a dice to see if Ingle, you know, Ingleby's regiment because it is in the area reacts and maybe supports it could well be a charge of the light brigade or it could be the most interesting opening gambit from Lord Capel who controls these uh, cavalry that I, I've seen and we'll also maybe have to roll a dice to see if these guys who have been kind of watching down Malden Road for the last 15 minutes they you know Colonel Slingby was positioned here he did his little scout and formed up I wonder if he's gonna maybe realize if Colonel Slingby is gonna come in here I mean, we may have to fudge it we may have to think of a suitable scenario or just leave it up to the dice now over here we've got the tower regiment forming up near this forested area to the southwest of the town with its battery guns way out of distance to try and uh, shoot at St Mary's where Humpty Dumpty is, is sat up on top of the wall but uh, they might give it a go anyway but we'll see this is a nice little position I would have actually liked to see Sir Honeywood support uh, Fairfax's line across here but uh, they haven't done so good old CT 
has marched all of his men <laughs> down Sheep Ben Road. Now, I mean, this is this is fairly boggy ground. It's it's in the flood flood plain. They they're going at a fair pace, but not overly fast. It'll be yeah, it'll be close to eleven o'clock by the time he gets to Boxted Road, which is where he wants to end up. Most of the parliamentary cavalry has has made it there. They've set up some dragoons just in like the cluster of houses, and uh, yeah, this is this is where the drama is is going to happen. I think on on the Boxted Road, because yeah. You want players to enjoy themselves. You you want them to sort out problems and and come up with nice ways to fix things. We've got uh, Sir George Lyle, the player here, commanding uh, Colonel Culpepper, has ordered some troops. Now his wording was to to block the bridge and try to destroy it, so as to not allow the parliamentarians away into town. Which is fair enough, and uh, we 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 kind of came up with a nice little scenario here, where uh, Colonel Culpepper sent uh, some horse over the last half an hour, picked up some barrels of gunpowder from St Mary's steeple, came back down, and we're going to maybe try and put them on like a, a dice timer. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, we'll roll these dice, and if they get up to ten before these guys attack they've managed to to jury rig a, a gunpowder bomb to try and see if the bridge is is gonna is gonna be blown up and then we'll attempt it and then we'll roll another dice and see you know if they roll like a five or a six or something then then the bridge is gone but it's great to see that kind of ingenuity as well and we kind of came up with a problem to for, for players to solve because the player who is Charles Lucas is kind of playing two characters. He's he's playing Charles Lucas with his little Essex volunteers, and he's also playing St Mary's Steeple. But Lord Capel has not moved from the vicinity of St Mary's. He, he's directed his troops well enough. So I thought, you know what? Let's let's have like a three-way problem where Charles. Uh, Lucas is receiving Colonel Culpepper's men. Lord Capel kind of sees like a little goings on and sees people loading gunpowder into a wagon. So they say, oh, what's, what's going on here? And it was funny because Lord Capel thought that they might have been parliamentarian spies trying to blow up the North Gate <laughs> and has sent a, uh, a troop of his cavalry to go sit, check out what's going on and it just so happens that uh, they, they sent a message back and said yeah it's all legit they're just trying to blow the bridge and we're going to help them uh, so I was thinking maybe the timer should go up to 12 but because he's got these extra men helping him I've, I've brought it back down to 10 so what was supposed to be a problem has now maybe turned into a benefit for, for the royalists but it, it's kind of fun to see messages go back and forth and go did you order these men to blow the bridge? They've come to St Mary's and they're taking gunpowder out of the out of the stores. Like, what what's going on? Uh, so yeah, it was quite funny to see that. Uh, you got Sir William Campion over here. His surname might be Champion, but in in the in the records it was spelt Campion. So what are you going to do? Uh, again, under Sir George Lyle's command, he's actually going to go to the North Gate and. We're probably going to plonk him up there and say his 200 men are kind of watching this part of the wall. It's a fair move by Sir George Lyle, actually. He's, he's, I, I didn't think he was going to take much of... Uh, be a star. You know, I mean, he, he had most of the royalist infantry and a few blocks of cavalry, but he's really used his troops quite well and... and and foreseen some of the problems that might be coming. Uh, so Charles Lucas, also the player, he has is also sent a message to these battery guns to pack up and, and move down to the headgate because I think some of the players 
are blinkered, especially on the royalist side. And whereas intelligence did say that the parliamentarians are coming from the southwest, and we are to try and retreat up to Suffolk, and we've been sending rioters up to Suffolk to try and rally some 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 of the populace. Well, as I said in my previous video, Suffolk was for was for Parliament, and we got Colonel Gordon arriving at eleven o'clock, and unbeknownst to either side, although although the parliamentarians are aware of they've got an extra player, they they don't know where he's going to come in from. Uh, and it's quite interesting because whereas you've got all the par all the royalist forces coming out the headgate now forming up a line to defend the town and maybe even attack Lord Fairfax as soon as they maybe realize they're only facing two commanders and most of the cavalry is is up here that as soon as they figure that out that they have overwhelming advantage in cavalry numbers I think the, the royalists will attack and whereas we did say we were expecting maybe Honeywood to, to march down Lexton Road and maybe support Fairfax and then maybe Gordon can sneak in it looks like it's turned on its head it's 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 flipped whereas Honeywood and Gordon will probably now have to try and team up and assault the East Gate which is lightly defended and will have no guns I'm interested to see if they actually figure that out and if they capture Colchester Castle it could be over um, and uh, yeah so going forward we'll have to see if Lord Fairfax dies if he's supported by any of his troops and if he can try and defend it and not lose his guns how the parliament uh, how uh, the royalists actually react because they're going to see where honeywood is at 10:15 uh, emerging i mean because he is pretty much covered by hedges and the distance and a forest that we've conveniently put on that corner at 10:15 how they're going to react Or will they actually start speaking to each other more and uh, and and say, well, don't worry, the the, the North Bridge is is going to be blown. So there's that. But we do have to uh, resolve a few things on camera for you, so the the players know that I'm not cheating. St Mary's Battery up here, Humpty Dumpty, has shifted south, and he's trying to attempt to shoot at the enemy battery. Now I will put the distances up for the editor to, to say, but I mean they are pretty it's like one point two kilometers away. It's it's a bit of a big ask, even for such a big cannon as that in, in high ground to shoot. It's gonna fall in dead ground, but we did say that uh three quarters of an extra ton on top of a steeple and Humpty Dumpty did fall fall down he did fall off the wall and uh, whether it was by artillery fire from parliamentarians in history or just the weight of this thing on top of an old medieval steeple I mean three quarters of a ton on some on some beams and uh, some old stonework that even by them standards is probably over 600, 800 years old. Is it going to stand up? So we said if it rolls a one, it crashes through the <laughs> crashes through the steeple and is no more before it shoots. So we'll roll the dice and we'll see if it's a one. It's a five. So we'll have to tell them what uh, well I mean it's no no effect it's no effect it falls, falls in dead ground this thing cannot shoot over a kilometer even in high ground it's it's insane and I kind of did maybe fudge the 
the distance is a little, but hey ho. Okay, well this thing needs to get to a 10, so let's see what uh, they get uh, for their first roll. Let's, so, ah, oh, it gets a 2. <laughs> Not great. You'll be at it for an hour if you keep continue like that. So, so far the bridge holds, and so does Humpty Dumpty. But it looks like uh, looks like we're in for a good fight going forward for the next hour. Um, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ciao for now.